I'm Gemma and this summer I've had the pleasure of sharing with you some of the secrets from the Museum of Norwich at the Bridewell which is in the heart of the Norwich Lanes. We've delved through history to explore marvellous medicine, cheeky snapdragons and the city's love of chocolate. And now as part of Heritage Open Days I'd like to give you a sneak peek into the oldest part of the Bridewell and take you on a virtual tour of the Undercroft which is hidden below the museum. An undercroft is a vaulted room beneath a medieval house and they were mainly used for the safe storage of valuable wares. Now, did you know that Norwich has the largest number of undercrofts in the country? At least 70 survive, most from the 15th century. So where are they all hidden? Well, several undercrofts are tucked below buildings in Norwich lanes a mere stone's throw away from the Museum of Norwich. Here at Bedford Spa, there is a superb undercroft hidden just below the building, which is now used as a venue for events. There's another here, underneath this shop on Bedford Street. And you wouldn't know it to look, but this travel agent sits atop one of the smaller undercrofts in the city. And here below Diggity Boo Toy Shop is the tiniest undercroft in the city, measuring just 10 square metres. Whilst many of the secular medieval buildings in Norwich no longer exist, these brick and flint built structures often survived fires and the destruction of the buildings on top of them, leaving them intact. Now the undercroft beneath the Museum of Norwich is said to be one of the largest in the country, measuring over 300 square metres. The L-shaped structure beneath the museum runs all along here and beneath this magnificent flint wall. The wall is made up of squared or napped flint, the result of a highly skilled and laborious procedure befitting of the status of the house at the time. It's said to be the finest example of napped flint in the country. The undercroft at the Museum of Norwich is all that remains from the very earliest part of the building. We know that there was a dwelling here from 1302, and in 1325, wealthy merchant Geoffrey de Salle built a grand house here, which is when the undercroft dates from. 50 years on, and the house changed hands yet again, now owned by William Appleyard, another wealthy merchant and the very first mayor of Norwich. Now at this point, the undercroft was used as a storeroom, and evidence of a street entrance and courtyard entrance indicates that prospective buyers were shown into the undercroft where goods were displayed. Business was then conducted in the comfort of the elegant house upstairs. However, things were to change dramatically in 1583, when the building was sold to city authorities for the grand sum of £240, and transformed into a bridewell, or house of correction. Bridewells were opened to deal with the increasing numbers of destitute and homeless in the 16th century, following on from the dissolution of the monasteries. In the 1570s, around a fifth of the population of Norwich relied on charity and many found themselves here at the Norwich Bridewell. Life was harsh, with inmates being put to work, cutting wood, grinding malt and carding fleece for wool. Although housed upstairs in what is now the museum galleries, we know that there were stocks and whipping posts down in the undercroft, with records showing that these were used for unruly persons. In 1751, there was a devastating fire here, which destroyed much of the building, leaving just the undercroft and flint wall intact. It was reported that an inmate known as Peter the Wild Boy may have set the blaze. Peter had been confined to the Bridewell after he was found wandering the streets of Norwich and was assumed to be a vagrant. He had little communication and it is rumoured that he set fire to the Bridewell and then refused to leave the burning building, having to be dragged from the flames. It later became clear that this man had come from Hertfordshire. We don't know how he ended up in Norwich, but for years he had been living at St James Palace in London, where he had been kept as a kind of curiosity or pet by George I. King George had brought Peter from Germany to entertain him at court after he was found living feral or wild in the woods as a child. Recent research has found that Peter had a genetic condition which would have affected his appearance and possibly his ability to communicate. The Wild Man pub just along from the museum is a reminder of the story of Peter, along with this charming miniature statue. 
After the fire, much of the building was rebuilt, complete with cell blocks upstairs, and was used as a more formal prison. Downstairs, the undercroft was still in use, and in 1782, the well-known prison reformer John Howard visited the Bridewell and recorded that... The dungeons are down 15 steps. In one part, four rooms for the men, and in another part, three, more close and damp, for women. But it is to be hoped the gentlemen, who have made many improvements in their jail, will be so considerate as to order these cells to be barred to all, unless to such as are very disobedient. Employment is too laborious and severe where most of the prisoners are women. Following prison reform, inmates were moved out of the Bridewell and it became used as a warehouse and shoe factory. It's from this time that we believe these rather ominous looking nails date, probably for hanging shoe lasts from when the building was a shoe factory. When we open, we use this atmospheric space for our escape game, tours, teaching, and due to it being the perfect temperature for a pint, beer tasting. So that's the story of our incredible Undercroft. There are dozens all across the city, or rather underneath the city, many big enough to be used for bars, event spaces, and even seating for a chip shop. Oh yes. Right here in the heart of Norwich Lanes is the Grovesner Fish Bar, where you can enjoy your delicious chips underground. Don't forget to check out the other places you can explore as part of Heritage Open Days in Norwich.